Hmm, that all sounds real nice. Good morning, Internet. This is Olin from what I'm listening to. Today's video is gonna be a little different than my other videos. If you watch enough of my stuff, you know that I talk about nothing but music. The different styles of music, the different genres, the artists that produce all of this. Everything music. But instead of talking about music on this video, I want to dive into a realm known as non-music, or more specifically, field recordings. What is a field recording? Well, it's basically what it sounds like. It's recordings taken from a field. The fields could refer to an actual field. It can refer to a beach, a city, a valley, a forest, really anywhere. Initially, field recordings were pretty exclusive for scientific purposes. Scientists would venture out into different environments, again, forest, city, beach, wherever, in order to record their surroundings. Some of them went out to just record the general noise of the area just to try to get an idea of what a certain part of the world would sound like, while some went to these environments to capture a specific thing. Most of the time it was the sound of a bird, the sound of an insect, uh, the sound of many animals in a habitat, something along those lines. And a lot of these recordings can be found on the internet, typically for free, for anybody who's interested in the subject or is wanting to use it as a reference because they are studying the same thing. But nowadays, field recordings are not just exclusive for scientists. A lot of artists, musical artists, or just general artists, have taken the concept of field recordings and made it into their own. Whether these people were trying to replicate ambient sounds with instruments or electronics, they were going out into their own environments and taking amateur recordings of whatever they wanted to, and even incorporating these field recordings as sort of a background to their own musical compositions. And on this video, I'm going to talk about the field recording CDs that I own in my collection here. But before I jump into the CDs themselves, I want to briefly touch on why the hell I like field recordings. If you watch enough of my videos, you would know that I am very much into experimental and ambient music. And that being known, it makes sense for me to be diving into that field recording world, because field recordings are basically nature's ambient music. It's quite literally ambience. But even before getting into experimental and ambient music, I have always held a fascination for sound. Even as a child, I can remember times where I would just sit and listen to my surroundings. Whether the surroundings were the neighborhood I grew up in, uh, paying a visit to the beach, going for a hike in the redwoods, just whatever surroundings I was, I always very much enjoyed just listening. And the fact now that there exists this sort of movement of artists taking these natural sounds and putting them out for an artistic sake, not for a scientific sake, for people like myself to listen to and consume, I think is brilliant. Field recordings are really not recognized by the general public. I imagine a lot of folks are sort of baffled by the idea of buying a CD that consists of just sound, not even music, and somebody actually taking the time to listen to the whole thing and going, hey, this is great. But we definitely exist. And with all that being said, let's dive in to some of the field recording CDs I have here in my collection. I will definitely preference that a couple of the albums I have here are stuff I've already talked about in previous videos, but for the sake 
of this video, it's only appropriate to include them again. And let's start things off with Lauren Chase's Synthesis of Neglected Places. This album is more or less the reason why I'm sitting here right now making this video. I had found this in the dollar section at Amoeba, and I had known about it just from exploring Bandcamp or whatever sources I could find field recordings, and when I found this album and sampled it a bit, I dug it. The fact that it was only $1.99 was really, really exciting, so I snagged it. But the thing is, is I really didn't know who Lauren was or what the sources of the sounds came from. I knew nothing about this. For the purpose of this video, I actually took the time to research who Lauren was and where these sources came from, as well as everything else I'm going to talk about. This is probably going to get a little scientific on this video, so I'll leave a lot of data in the description below for all of you to read up on all of this stuff, in case you're curious. But anyways, Lauren is a sound artist, field recordist, and teacher. He's been involved with a lot of experimental groups. Most notably, he was involved in the development of the Jeweled Antler Collective, basically taking a bunch of like-minded experimental musicians and bringing them all together to record, release, and just perform together. He also taught a curriculum in San Francisco to children, basically placing emphasis on sound and trying to enhance their perception of sound. His whole idea behind it was to allow children to live more in the moment. The recordings on this album were taken from his mother's house in Pennsylvania sometime in the late, late 90s. The recordings on here are very, very low fidelity. It's pretty evident that whatever he was using to take these sounds is out of date. But that sort of adds some charm to this album. There are a lot of field recordings out there that are nice, crisp, clear, you know what it is. But the low fidelity nature of these recordings adds a sort of experimental twist to it. It's very evident on here that this isn't meant to use, again, for scientific purposes. This was just him listening to the sound around his mom's house. He must have taken an interest in it. He must have found some sort of pleasure in these noises, so much so that he was inspired to go out and capture them. And thus, we're left with this. This is a beautiful album. It's one of many similar sounding albums he has in his discography. I'm excited that I have this. I hope I can someday find more of Warren's music, presumably in the clearance section. Uh, and if I do, I will definitely get it. The next album I have for you today, I have Music of the Firewalkers. I think this may be the third time I've brought this album in a video. But considering the fact that we're talking about field recordings, it's more than appropriate to bring it up again. The contents of this album include recordings taken from some unknown village in Greece sometime in the 70s. During the time these recordings were taken, the people of the village were performing a religious tradition known as Anastanaria. The practices of this tradition include frantic music, chanting, animal sacrifice, uh, but most importantly, dancing on burning coals. On the third day of this tradition, participants would dance to this frantic music that was being played, holding up some kind of offering in the air, and the idea behind it was after they finished their dance, they would walk away from these burning coals completely unharmed. And knowing all of that, there's sort of this spooky quality to these recordings. Thankfully, you don't hear any animal sacrifice. It's all just the chanting, the music, and the burning coal sound. <laughs> 
for me, I find the recordings fascinating. The music that's on there, I think, is really great onto itself. But the moments on the album where there's no music, just talking, just noise, the sound of burning coal, all of that, I think is just amazing. It's like you're right in the middle of the action. You're participating in this tradition. I don't think I've found an album quite like it before. Thankfully, you can download these recordings for free on Bandcamp, which I'll leave a link to down below. But after I heard them, I wanted to get physical copies of this. I got a vinyl pressing first because that was the easiest one to obtain. This one, I had to do a little bit of digging because the CDR pressings were pretty limited. But I'm glad I have a copy. It's one of my most prized possessions. I absolutely love this album, and I encourage anybody who is interested in field recordings or Greek traditions should definitely check this out. This is great, great stuff here. Next album I have for you today, I have Stephen P. McGreevy's Electric Enigma. The last albums were pretty straightforward in the sense of they were just recordings taken of the environment around them. This, however, is getting into a very sciencey portion. The contents of this album include recordings taken of the Aurora Borealis. And I know what you're thinking, how in the hell do you record the sound of light? Well, our friend Steven here figured out a way to do it. Steven specializes in radio and capturing radio signals. He developed a way of capturing the so-called sounds of the sun's energy impacting with our Earth's magnetosphere through these radio signals. And what you hear on here is wherever the environment he is taking these recordings at, with the sort of whistling, clicking, bizarre kind of sounds, those are the particles. It's all very, very sciencey and complex. I don't know too much about it. I only did enough general research to talk about it a little bit. Again, I'll leave more information in the description down below so you can read up on it. He has a website where he goes in very, very big detail on all of it. But from what my pea-sized brain can take from it, I love this stuff. I stumbled across this in the experimental section at Amoeba and immediately was captivated by the cover. I had no idea what to expect from it. I just liked the cover and I liked that it was a double album, so I thought this has got to be a lot of good stuff here, so let's get it. This isn't really something I would put on at a party or even tell about someone flat out. This is for someone who is either interested in the study of radio waves or is even interested in experimental stuff. Whatever your interests are, I think this is something definitely worth checking out. I'll also leave a link down below to a place where you can listen to and download the contents of this for free because it's all for science. But I appreciate all the work Steven went through to capturing these recordings and how nice this packaging is. This contains two discs, contains this booklet full of information and the history of this album. I, I just, I eat stuff up like this. The CD collector in me loves things like this. So thank you, Steven, for putting this out and for capturing these amazing recordings. Staying on the topic of science, the next albums I have for you today, I have all five volumes of NASA's Symphony of the Planets. While the last album was recordings taken of the Aurora Borealis, or Light, these are recordings taken from outer space. Once again, I know what you're probably thinking, how do you record outer space? There's literally nothing out there. It's a vacuum. 
And you would be right for thinking that. And truth be told, the contents of this album aren't quite field recordings from outer space. NASA launched the Voyager 1 and 2 probes into space with the whole intention of making them travel across the solar system, but the probes were also equipped with a sort of technology that was able to record the electromagnetic waves of planets. And the data that they recorded was taken and translated in such a way to where we hear these sort of droney noises as music. And again, when I say music, I mean just general atmospheric noise. Every single CD here features a different piece. Each piece goes for roughly 50 to 60 minutes long. This is the kind of stuff that nerds like me love. I love space music, I love ambient music, I love field recordings, so having ambient space sounds on CDs here really excites me. Big shout out to my girlfriend for getting all of these for me for my birthday. She knew that I had wanted to get these for a long time, but never actually went out to find them. So she took the liberty of buying all five of them for me in one sitting. Now anytime I need something atmospheric to listen to, whether to calm down or zone out to, I can refer to these. And I'll leave a link in the description down below for more information on how NASA got these recordings, uh, how they translated them to the stuff on here, and even a way to listen to these, because these are amazing. Alrighty then, internet. Let's wrap things up here with a relatively new release. I have here Ernest Hood's Neighborhoods. Ernest initially started as a jazz musician sometime in the 60s and 70s. He used to perform with his brother, who was a guitarist, around the Portland, Oregon area. And throughout his career as a musician, he only ever released this one album. Initially, this only came out independently on vinyl, and sadly, when he released it, it went completely unnoticed. It wasn't until the good people of Freedom to Spend took the liberty of remastering and reissuing the contents on the CD and putting them out for the public to hear for the first time since the 70s. Though I said that Ernest was a jazz musician, this album is Kind of far from being a jazz record. Maybe jazz from a technical standpoint, but none like any jazz album I have ever heard. Ernest's whole idea behind making this album was to invoke joy in reminiscence. He took the natural sounds of the neighborhoods he grew up in in Portland and mixed them together with very weird, synthy sounding songs. The music itself is very minimal. A droning keyboard, a strumming guitar, some kind of electronic sound. The bigger emphasis on the stuff here is the field recordings he took. The sounds of children playing, the sounds of dogs and cats making noise, cars going by, insects chirping, crunching leaves. Again, the whole idea of it was to make someone reminisce on their past. And I think there's some merit to what he's doing here. For me, I grew up in a suburban environment and I can easily hear the stuff I heard as a child on this record. Though the big difference is these were taken in the 70s and I grew up in the late 90s, early 2000s. I think 
it's pretty timeless to hear this. It really shows that the innocence of a neighborhood really hasn't changed that much. You would still hear the same stuff that you're hearing on this record in a neighborhood today. I would even go as far as saying you could visit the neighborhood he grew up in today, and you would probably hear very similar sounds. The whole experience of this album is beautiful, and I honestly could not be happier to see that this is finally getting some well-deserved attention. Thank you so very much freedom to spend for putting this one out. This is easily one of my favorite reissues of 2019. It's a beautiful album, a wonderful experience. I highly recommend anybody give this one a listen. Alrighty then, internet, that does it for me. Hey, if you have any albums you want me to check out, particularly any field recording albums you like, leave a comment down below, and if I like it, maybe I'll include it in another vlog. Also, if you like this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It'll show me the support, and I'll love your face for it. And you can follow me on Instagram for even more music. I post a new album on there semi-frequently, talk a little bit about it, and it gives you a bit of an insight of what else is in my collection. So, thank you all very, very much for watching this video. This is Olin from What I'm Listening To, signing out. Goodbye.